Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are, and welcome everyone. And today I have with me a person whom I hold in very high esteem. Uh, his name is Mr. Devendra Pandey. He is a very good friend in Christ. Um, he is an amazing speaker, very inspirational speaker. He, uh, he, he has spoken at churches, he has pastored churches in the past. And uh, so here we are, uh, even to be honest with you, even though I've known him for a few years, I've never known what his uh, story or what his background has been uh, going from uh, Hinduism to Christianity, to the church, to, to Christ. So here I thought, as I am doing this series, let me just uh, get on somebody, somebody whom I know personally, and but I've never known the past at all. So uh, on to Pastor Devendra or Mr. Devendra Pandey, as he likes to be called. He's an intellect, a uh, good reader. He loves to read books. He's got his family, his uh, wonderful wife and children that he has. So I'll start off with the first question, uh, Devendra sir. Uh, so what is the background that you come from before you came to Christ? What is the family background like? What is your personal background like? So, yeah, th thanks um, for the question, Naren. And it's always been a pleasure to uh, know you and connect with you. And it's a privilege to be here speaking to your audience. Uh, basically, I grew up in a uh, mid-sized town in MP, and uh, I was born in a family which were which is practicing Hindus, and that's what I learned in my childhood. That's what I followed, and uh, then I went and did my engineering, and uh, just to maybe in terms of background, it makes it. Um, you know, appropriate to tell you that uh, sometime towards the end of my college time, I actually, after a lot of internal thought, I decided to become an atheist. So that's what my background is. I currently live in Mumbai. I, uh, with my wife and two children, uh, I came here for work from MP and my folks are still in MP. Wow. Uh, Pastor, if you don't uh, mind me ask, uh, so what's, what's the caste that you belong to? You said you were a Hindu, so what's the caste that you belong to? Well, uh, as my surname suggests, I basically we are from Brahmin background. My, my parents and my family have been very religious people. Um, you know, traditionally we have been uh, all, almost at the forefront of uh, uh, Hindu, uh, you know, uh, religious system. So my parents take pride in in the fact that uh, they know their religion very well and they practice it uh, very meticulously. So you said you are from an engineering background. So you are very studious. So uh, that's really something. So. Then you said you became an atheist. So what was your uh, primary reasons, if you don't mind me, sir, with regards to rejecting your current worldview and uh, switching over to a system that says there is actually no God? Yeah, I was um, very, you know, our generation, as you know, uh, we we were in a huge transition. Uh, we We were becoming more aware of the world around us. As we were in college, uh, we were thinking a lot more. We were exposed to the world. Internet, uh, uh, internet wasn't there, but media was very strong. And uh, I was asking questions in my heart that whatever I heard in childhood and started following, is it really true? So I was basically going to temples, going to praying in front of uh, uh, statues, and uh, uh, you know, for a season, believing that they are listening to me, and I, I basically recollect at one time I was in my final year of college. There was an important moment of my personal life, so I was needing God at that moment of time, and I was standing in that temple in front of a, an idol, and I'm thinking in my heart, is this idol really listening to me? And uh, it was almost like a moment of revelation. Deep within my heart, I knew that uh, it's not listening to me. 
there cannot be an answer and i walked out of that temple that day and i decided maybe i'll pray in my heart so i would not say i was very strict atheist to begin with i would still talk to god in my heart and say god do you really exist are you there i mean who am i talking to am i really making sense but i i had decided from that day onwards that i'm not going to practice religion or i'm going to i'm not going to pray before an idol so basically practically i became an atheist well and what was your parents reaction if you don't mind me asking did you well, tell them or well yeah i had to over a period of time and they knew that i was uh, very modern i was growing in my thought process i had started my job i was an engineer i was making good choices in terms of my career i was also a little bit rebellious so uh, so i think the predicament of my parents uh, would have been interesting they didn't want me to make any destructive choices and and this lack of interest in religion to them might have seemed uh, not a very destructive choice so they let me uh, go on with that so for example when my parents came to mumbai to visit me they wanted to visit a temple i would take them to the temple to in order to express my respect towards them but i would also tell them going inside the temple doesn't make sense to me because i no more believe in those and they they would be okay with that oh man that that's really something that's really and i i really admire you and your parents that they allowed you to express yourself and how i wish that you know so many other countries are there so many families are there where uh, you know you know there are different world views where they would like to shift it could be christianity it could be something else and they're simply not allowed there would be so many social issues and background issues on that wow okay so yeah. then uh, how long did you continue like that pastor well this this went on for about 7 7 years and um, my life as an atheist uh, was very interesting because i was running after uh, money success uh, you know i was very well exposed to the party culture of mumbai and i was young and i was making the best use of that at the moment and i kind of my non religious kind of a lifestyle actually supported me i felt a little bit of a freedom a lack of obligation and uh, i was pretty happy with that and it went out on quite long hmm wow very interesting background so uh, then what happened then how uh, how things changed yeah so you know deep within the struggle went on though i chose to ignore it repeatedly i was uh, i would talk occasionally to that unknown entity in my mind and then talk myself out of it also that maybe this is just a fantasy and god doesn't exist and why do i need i am a strong person i can make it on my own you know that kind of stuff and yeah. i was energy you know and uh, and thankfully the you know the uh, ongoing success was supporting my my philosophy so i was feeling quite bolstered in my ideas with that but over a period of time as we all know uh, we we must face life things do happen in life hearts do get broken there are times when all your support system uh, all put together cannot help you you need to cry out to somebody higher than you you need to get to the that place and i was in that place this was the year 2001 and i was in that place where uh, my for just a little while all my support system seemed to have gone all my philosophy all my proud confessions of being uh, being able to live without god uh, were being shaken and i i would not say i was like really looking for god even then i was basically looking for some uh, some kind of a get away get away you know and uh, yeah yeah 
and one of my friends invited me to a church and i felt that i wasn't interested in the church i wasn't interested in religion i wasn't interested in god but uh, somehow on that morning um i felt that i almost went uh, to church as if i'm going to a movie you know uh, just for a break yeah. kind of a thing you know uh, but i found god on that morning i found god personally so, okay now let me tie two pieces together uh, first if i ask you about one thing that moved you away from god just one the topmost one thing that moved you away from god um, that you were believing in you were a hindu practicing hindu and that you are like the influential class of brahmins so you're not even like a you know dalit or you know like the lower classes where you'd be you know begging for things and you know uh, looking for some other possibly you know not all are like that because people say that way because uh, you know people who come to christians they say mostly it is the lower caste people they could because they need support like you know money support or stuff like that so you didn't have any such requirement so what was the one thing that disillusioned you on the world view that you were believing in what would you say just one thing i deep within my heart i knew that it was all man made it was constructed by human beings and uh, i knew there was no god in it okay so then when on that day when you visited the church with your friend i don't know which church so i am not even going to ask i leave it to your uh, you and god himself uh, how did that particular query get answered how, what would you say on that well it's very experiential on one part because mm -hmm. uh, when i went to the church my idea uh, as a as a hindu person uh, who had probably a very little exposure to christianity barring what i had seen in movies and all so i was expecting a lot of religious stuff in this church and uh, they kind of very pleasantly surprised me by being a very very free normal uh, human beings they were singing songs which were pleasant to the ears i could relate to those songs they were singing to god those words make made sense to me i was previously used to some sanskrit stuff which i very understood but we repeated it uh, in contrast to that i come to this church and Uh, we are singing and almost involuntarily i found myself singing those songs myself along with the group and when they spoke when the bible was opened i thought now there would be some kind of a religious moment but rather there were things getting spoken which uh, which reached my life deeply in that when pastor talk i mean it was very interesting arain uh, to Uh, I, i was as i told you i was going through some relational issues and i had a lot of questions you know burning in my heart and i almost felt a little bit ashamed and i could not ask those question to anybody uh, and this pastor is preaching a message from the bible and he starts addressing these questions and i'm saying who the who in this whole universe could tell this man that i am coming here this morning and i have these questions and then you know what happens i mean this is amazing the next moment while i'm thinking this the pastor says from the stage some of you may be thinking that how in this world i came to know that you have this question and i'm saying man this must be god i mean uh, and uh, then of course i mean you have lived a christian life and we pursue a relationship with god many such things have happened in our life but but for me that was like first time in life something like that and it was almost as if god is giving an evidence that if you are really interested then i am willing to reveal yourself to you me myself to you wow that's amazing that's amazing sir and uh, wow you know i think it's in jeremiah 29 where it says you know we'll you'll see you'll seek for me and you'll find me when you search for me with all of your heart so and you know as we believe that god reaches us where we are looking for him and you know, it's not otherwise 
So um, now just to for my audience, I would just like to say that uh, knowing Mr. Devendra for many years, it's not that it's just from an experiential basis because he keeps referring me to many books that he reads. And when I hear him speak also, it's not that just, you know, like a goody goody feeling sermons. It's also very deeply thought of and read. So it's has it also been an intellectual pursuit for you or uh, what has been your search like? Well, thank you for asking that, Naren. It's a very relevant question because if it was just those feelings, I know after a little while, those feelings would have faded away. I would exactly. have enjoyed the exactly. moment on that and yeah. uh, probably not even come back to the church again. Uh, but you know, um, what happened on that day, I had a couple of conversations after the, after the uh, church service and um, uh, the amazing man of God, Pastor Carl Silva, uh, I was having a conversation with him and he said a few challenging things to me, which actually the atheist ex-Hindu in me was not willing to accept. And he proposed to me that Christ is the only, the exclusive, the only way to God. He is God. And, um, you know, and the Bible proves itself. He, he challenged me, if you, if you open the Bible and you read it, you will find enough evidence on your own. And he respected my intellect and he said, you know, I don't need to convince you. You just go take this, uh, you know, he gave me a gospel of John, take this uh, gospel of John, read it for yourself. So actually, I did not receive the Lord um, on the, in the church that day. I took the gospel of John home that afternoon. It was a Sunday afternoon, a free moment. I opened the gospel of John, started reading. It was amazing. It begins with the words like in the in the beginning was the word and the word was God and word was with God. And then it says word became flesh and it's talking about Lord Jesus Christ. And um, I had goosebumps reading that gospel. I could not put it down. I just kept reading and in the end and I was all tears. It was God spoke to me at that moment and I was not looking for God. I mean, I uh, it's 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 an interesting paradox. I I thought I was not looking for God. I was not actively seeking him. But but when I read those words, I realized that in in heaven I have a father, and I have denied it him long enough. And he broke my heart. He he touched me. He expressed his love to me at that moment, and it was so tangible. I fell on my knees. Nobody taught me how to pray. I fell on my knees and I said, Father. I believe in you. No. And the, I mean, it, it's life changing. It, it changed everything. Uh, but but uh, uh, so, so that was first. But I, was, I wasn't going to stop there. I, I said, I'm going to read this whole Bible. I am going to find out. I mean, this exclusivity claim was big claim. And um, one of my friends in those days, and I, I really, uh, amazing man of God, Stefan Olson. And uh, he gave me a book to read. And I would recommend to your viewers this book uh, written by a gentleman called Josh McDowell. And the book's name is More Than a Carpenter. I read that book, a thin book, an amazing book. He gives evidences. And uh, I mean, for the first time, I realized that faith doesn't have to be uh, um, a matter of uh, uh, vagueness. It is something concrete. It is, it, it is historical. Uh, we are not talking about things uh, which are subjective, non-defined. These are the things which are realities of life. There are evidence after evidence all across. And if one has, if one, if one really wants to inquire, then that inquiry is very much possible. I read that book. I read a few more things. And I was thoroughly convinced that this is real. This is true. So that's everything, Pastor. That's really uh, touching. 
Well, I never knew that uh, what you told me. Um, anyway, so just for the sake of records, because you know, uh, especially the Hindu people claim that. Uh, was there any enticement of people offering you any money or uh, anything else, material pleasures of the world? <laughs> I know that's a funny question, but <laughs> yeah. So yeah, please go. <laughs> I have yeah. to ask you this. Yeah, thanks. I mean, I was asked that question from um, some from some people very close to me because um, when I when I started uh, confessing this fact that my, I'm changed, I have moved in my faith. I have started believing in the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in my community. In, uh, in my friend circle, which was very broad minded, by the way, uh, there was an objection. There was a, I was taken aside on men more than one more than many occasions um, uh, for this conversation that what made you believe? And I was scolded. Uh, but one of the questions some people asked was, were you offered something? So my friends thought I've gone there for the sake of girls. Some people thought that I've gone there for the sake of money. And with those people, I had an immediate question back and which they could not answer. I said, listen, uh, you know me. And uh, how much do you think an offer to knowingly lure me to a lie? How much? Because I was fairly successful. I was I was earning uh, well. I was well to do. So, so the question which I asked most people could not answer because because they knew, you know, like to really buy me that way would take a lot. And uh, normally, you know, uh, based on I understand what you're asking is normally there is that myth, and which I don't know. I can't vouch for everybody else in the world. But there's this myth that Christians missionaries would come and offer some small, you know, uh, amounts of money or some kind of help and people get lured. But I wasn't in that category, you know, I mean, come on. And I'm still like I, I'm 15 years later, 17 years later, 19 years later, actually, I'm still pursuing the, the, this faith. And by the grace of God, I'm still doing well, uh, working in a decent company at a decently high position, uh, contributing to our society, contributing to our country, and uh, and still pursuing my faith, you know. And nobody has offered me anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. That's really nice. So how things changed after you are coming to Christ, Pastor? How did things change? Yeah. Yeah, it could a, be on a personal very... front. It could be on a you know emotional front. It could be on a social front. Uh, you know, I'm uh, being a Christian myself. I know that it's an ongoing uh, you know life as we live in Christ. It's not like a one-time thing. It's a way of life. So, but initially in your initial years, you know, you know that's where the first one to three years is where the maximum struggle happens for people. So that you mentioned what happened. So and. Uh, how has it been after that? How's your life been post that? What changes did you see in your life? Well, uh, uh, and I know you you probably have your own personal experience, Naren. Uh, it was a world of a difference, you know. Though it occurred very slowly in my case. I mean, initially, all it meant that my focus shifted away from my pain uh, and my loneliness to reading the Bible and praying and having a relationship with God. Uh, but before I knew it, little by little, God started working deep within my heart. My, my priorities changed. My love towards people changed. I was, I was in principle, uh, when I look back, I was a very selfish person. You know, I would, I mean, I was here to make something for myself you know uh, that's what i knew and that's what i i wanted to do and suddenly 
uh, as I read the Bible, and I think, and as Bible says, God changes us from the inside. He gives us a new heart. And, you know, I started feeling compassion for people, people who, from whom I did not have anything to gain, you know. And, uh, and uh, those strange feelings, uh, I don't know where they came from, you know. They, they just, I did not even realize that they were getting in me. And uh, I wanted to make a difference in the society. I wanted to contribute to human life, you know. Uh, it wasn't uh, anymore just about money and success and stuff. I mean, uh, there came a point later in my life when I had to leave for a season that success ride which I was riding uh, voluntarily. And I said, all right, if it is God's will, then then so be it. He knows how to take care of me. And uh, and it's, uh, it's better to uh, live live in peace and follow values and principles uh, and um, rather than trading your soul uh, for the sake of tangible goods you know and and i'm not saying i lived an an ascetic life or anything i i i pursued a career i later god brought me back into an active career so i I give, I'm giving my best to my company. I'm raising two children. I'm I'm looking at their homework. I'm also, you know, trying to get um, a house in Mumbai and stuff like that. So we are doing those things. But I think the big change is that the world inside my heart before that and the world inside my heart after that. It, these are two different worlds. It's it's always a pleasure, Master, to hear you speak. Now, um, a couple of quick questions before you close. Um, there are many people, you know, who are sitting and, you know, maybe in the same position that you were, uh, searching, seeking, you know, questioning. If I ask you for a short piece of advice to those people, what would you say? Well, uh, start with reading the Gospel of John. <laughs> I think begin with reading scriptures because that's where you find the answer. I mean, human beings are too fragile to be trusted, and whoever they are, you know. So I I can't uh, base my life on human opinions. I have to go to a source uh, which has existed long enough and which will exist after I'm gone, and that's the Bible. Open uh, some pages of the New Testament. Uh, be humble. Uh, you will find the truth. God is, trust me, God is more ready to reveal himself to you than your keenness to seek him. So, so if you are there, you will find him. That's nice. I know that you love to read books and I've heard you quote C.S. Lewis quite often. So, which of the books are you reading at this time? At this time, well, <laughs> you caught me off guard. At the moment, I'm not. Um, but uh, you know, I've been thinking about one CSP. Your favorite series. books? If I, if I might ask you, uh, see, as I as, as I remember, you love to read, and I've yes. seen you quoting C.S. Lewis quite often. So, if I ask you for your top two non-Bible books, you know, like not including the Bible. So extra biblical authors, if I, might, if I might say it that way. If I ask you for your top two extra biblical authors or books, what would you say? Mere Christianity and uh, more than a carpenter. No, man. Mere Christianity, C.S. Lewis and more than a carpenter, Josh McDowell. Yes. Right. And your favorite words from the Bible. Yeah. Now, is not in this that we loved God first, but in this that God loved us first. Wow. This is Praise in God. John verse 10. Wow. Thank you so much, Pastor, for your time. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you for your humility. Thank you for your love. Thank you for agreeing for this conversation in this period of lockdown, Pastor. Thank you so much for everything you do. Take care, Pastor. Thanks. We look forward to meeting you again. Thanks, Naren. It's always a pleasure talking to you and thanks for um, a privilege to uh, 
um, to be uh, here and speaking to your audience. Thanks a lot. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. God bless.